Hi and welcome, I'm Sandro. Today I want to talk to you about my new home-built mechanical keyboard. My journey to mechanical keyboards started out with a different one actually. <clears throat> this was the Dactyl Maniform, which is the first mechanical keyboard I built. I liked it because it has this ergonomic look and feel with a thumb cluster here and a nice curvature. However, it turns out that uh, this curvature actually didn't really fit the way I was using a keyboard and um, especially my pinky finger never really hit the keys um, or the switches where it should have. So um, there was a lot of work building it all up, hooking it up, making it work and in the end I d ended up not really using it, uh, which was a shame of course. Then I decided to start over, I stripped it for parts and uh, started building a Redux model. The Redux model uh, has a flat base but then has these adjustable legs for, um, for ergonomics and I modified it to my liking with a couple of additional media buttons here, a scroll wheel, more media buttons here and a volume knob on this side. I also fitted it out with um, custom connectors here, a custom USB plug and the TRS mini jack for, um, for the connection between the two keyboards. So far I've been using this for about uh, four months and um, I'm really liking it. So I want to show you how you can build one of those on your very own. In a keyboard the keys are arranged in a matrix of rows and columns where every key belongs to exactly one row and one column. If you have a look at it from the inside how it's soldered up you see the exact same system where there's a grid uh, of rows and columns and all of these rows and columns are then connected to the microcontroller so if you have a look at one single key here this is the F key this would uh, be connected to row 2 and column 4 and once you press this key so there's a connection made between row 2 and column 4 which will then be the be detected uh, on the microcontroller. Here you see the connection diagram and again if for the F key row 2 and row 4 are connected via the F switch then the microcontroller can detect the F being pressed. Since you go through the effort of building your own keyboard you should also select the right keys for it but there's a multitude of them. Everyone has slightly different characteristics. Some are silent, some are clicky, this one. Some are have harder resistance, some less resistance. Basically, it's a matter of personal preference. However, uh, the cherry red and the coil purple are pretty safe bets, and they're one of the most sold keys. Nevertheless, you're gonna spend a lot of time hesitating and going back and forth, and not being sure what actually you really want to buy. <laughs> I started out with the open source Redux files and customized them, mainly added some space at the top to fit my media keys and the uh, volume knob and scroll wheel. Same thing on the lower side where I cut out some space to fit the additional PCBs and the um, hexagonal nuts that will hold my media buttons. And then you're gonna go back and hesitate again. And finally settle on a bunch of purple coil switches. In terms of other equipment, you're going to need a TRS mini jack cable, a micro USB cable, a couple of screws to hold everything together, obviously the switches, then diodes, as many diodes as switches. Those actually help to make it possible to press two switches at the same time. Microcontrollers, two of those. Rotary encoders, two of those. Um, media keys, media buttons, and a TRS mini jack plug as well as keycaps, those are custom ones, or you can use any old one from an old Cherry keyboard. First step in assembly, printing the keyboard. As easy as that. A little bit more seriousness, it should look something like this, where you end up with a top and bottom half. Now before you want to put all the keys inside, it makes sense to solder the diodes onto the um, individual switches. For this, I prepared little uh, ears or holes uh, on the diodes first and then attached one by one um, a diode to each of the keys. Doesn't matter on which side you attach them, just be consistent. 
After having placed all the switches and their diodes in the grid, you're then ready to solder the rows and columns to the microcontroller. For this, I find it most useful to prepare cables like that with insulation gaps at the positions of where the switches are sitting. To get there, you start out by removing a larger piece of insulation at the beginning of the cable and then cutting the insulation open at the positions where the switches are sitting. You can then slide down the remaining piece of insulation sleeve down towards the beginning of the cable and therefore creating these gaps. In that way, you'll end up with your rows and columns crisscrossing on the back of your keyboard, uh, which will remain largely insulated and therefore protect you from accidental connections or shortcuts between the rows and columns. The diodes help keeping everything in place while you're soldering. Once you're done, you should end up with a nice grid and the insulation sleeves should continue to protect all the rows and cables in order to pr prevent any shortcuts. Then you're ready to solder everything to the microcontroller. Here the TRS mini jack and the um, rotary encoder connectors are already connected to the microcontroller. Next, take all the rows and columns one by one and solder them to the microcontroller following the schematics at the beginning of the video. Obviously, it helps if you have multicolored cables. Personally, I didn't, so it looks a little bit like a mess. But if you keep close track of what you're doing, you should, it should work out just fine. Now, the Redux keyboard is a split keyboard, meaning it has two independent sides. Both sides are connected with a TRS 3.5mm mini jack, um, which connects the two independent microcontrollers together. Then there's a micro USB port that connects it to the computer. Now note there's only a single micro USB port, meaning that the left side here is the master. Now to program the keyboard, we're going to use the QMK framework. Go to their website and follow the installation guide uh, according to the OS you're using. In the keyboards folders, find the Redux keyboard and there there's a media key map. Uh, in there you'll find the configuration where you might want to make sure that USB serial is defined for the micro USB connection. Then as mentioned the left side is the master side which we're defining here and we'll also define the EE hands flag which forces us to flash the EEPROMs of both sides uh, of the keyboard telling them or hard coding on them which one is the left side and which one is the right one. Now in the key maps, you can define how your keyboard layout should look like. I went ahead and did something similar to a Swiss keyboard layout, but you can modify that or even create your own. Once you're happy with the setup and the keyboard layout, you can go ahead and compile it. Use the command as such, replacing your keyboard layout in the as arguments. And once we've done that, we're going to get the binaries, which can then flash to the microcontrollers. The binaries are created in the build folder at the root of QMK. Now to program the microcontrollers, obviously you're going to have to hook them up to the computer like so. Once they're connected, we're going to need to find out on which port they are. On Mac, it looks like this. Linux should look very si similar. And on Windows, you're going to have to find the COM port that you'll be using. Once we find out which port we're going to use, we can use the avrdude command as so and flash our binaries. The first binary we're going to flash is the one identifying the left or right hand, which we're going to flash on the EEPROM. Now, when flashing, what usually happens, or at least for me, it happens a lot, is that it fails with the programmer not responding. That's nothing to worry about, and the reason is we need to reset the microcontroller to bootloader. Here on the SparkFun website is described how you do it. You need to connect the reset button to the ground twice. I'm using a small cable, uh, like so, connecting it to the reset pin and then touching the ground pin twice. And as soon as this happens, you have eight seconds uh, where your microcontroller is in bootloader mode, where you can reuse the command as before and actually flash your EEPROMs. The next step, we're going to flash the actual keyboard files 
here in the build folder of the root of the QMK, we're going to use the same flash command as before, selecting the build binary and the COM port or the port that we've been using before. Reset the device again into bootloader mode as shown before and flash the keyboard files on both sides. After having programmed both sides, it's time to hook it all up and test it for the first time. At this stage, I recommend not fully assembling the keyboard as you might still have made some mistakes and maybe need to resolder or reflash a couple of things. But as you can see, I'm typing. As you're most likely unfamiliar with a split ergonomic keyboard layout, you're gonna be typing very slowly at the beginning as you need to get used to your new keyboard. But the keyboard itself, it works, it does what it should. It types the keys you press. Once you're happy with the setup and with the keyboard layout you programmed, you can start and actually fully assemble the keyboard. I'm using a sturdy solid um, wire for the connection as the microcontroller itself doesn't have a sturdy micro USB connector. Uh, I use a custom one which I fixed install in the lower part of the left side where I printed a custom holder for it. Next, you can screw in the TRS mini jack. Then it's pretty straightforward. I start by insulating the microcontroller with some plastic uh, just to make sure that the keys uh, don't touch the solder pads on the microcontroller. Then put the top and bottom halves together, screw them in place. And once this is done, uh, insert all the keycaps onto the switches. And finally, make sure that the volume knob and the scroll knobs are in place. And then you're set. You can then hook up your assembled keyboard one more time to your computer and start the final typing test or functionality test. Again, you're going to type slower and it's going to feel weird in the beginning, but I promise you, you'll get the hang of it in no time. And by now I love my keyboard and I'm as quick as I was on the old one. For a final test, we want to test the custom add-ons, the scroll wheel, working, the uh, volume knob, working as well, the mute button, working, play pause, working as well. I hope you enjoyed sharing my journey to mechanical keyboards. If you liked the video, please leave a thumbs up and you'd honor me if you also subscribe to my channel. In closing, I want to leave you with one remark, which is before you actually build the mechanical keyboard and I mean solder it uh, and everything, um, program it, make sure that you build one that actually fits your hand and your hand movements and that you really feel ergonomic with it. Uh, after all, having built this in complete, made it work and then just discarding it was a lot of effort um, for naught. Nevertheless, I'm really happy with the keyboard I have right now. I hope I could convey some of that passion to you and then um, enjoy building your own keyboard and then most of all using it. Thanks for watching. Oh.